Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Game Sack. So Joe, I was down at Walmart the other day and they had this sweet ass sale on a Polaroid HDTV. And if I buy that, I can use it with all of my game systems from the PS3 all the way back down to the NES. No, what do you think of don't, that? Don't, don't buy that. I mean, it might work fine with your PS3, but mm -hmm. for your NES, your Genesis, your Super Nintendo, you know, things of that nature, you don't want to play on an HDTV. Well, why not? It's, it's like 76 inches, dude. This thing is awesome. Well, it, we'll look at it and we'll see why you don't want to use old retro game consoles on an HDTV. Now just look how much fun Dave here is having playing the Super Nintendo on an old standard definition CRT television. <laughs> and here's why. When playing on a standard definition CRT TV, everything is displayed in its native resolution, 240p. This results in cool looking scan lines. HDTVs, however, have a single fixed resolution and every incoming signal is scaled to that resolution. With old school game consoles, this can result in a very blocky and unappealing image. Even CRT HDTVs like this one will make retro games look pretty bad. One thing you should know about old school systems is that the majority of games are in 240p. It's rock steady, no interlacing at all. HDTVs can interpret 240p signals as 480i if they can even see 240p signals at all. Sometimes this can mess things up in the process. Your image can be jittery, or it can have missing frames altogether, or it can have some awful combing type artifacts. Granted, all HDTVs aren't created equal. It depends on the scaler that's built inside your HDTV, how good the quality will be. You can also buy external scalers like the XRGB, which you can input an old console and output HD, and it actually works pretty well. One thing people seem to like doing with widescreen TVs is stretching everything to fit the screen, resulting in a distorted image. People claim that they paid for the entire screen, so they want it completely filled 100% of the time, damn it. That looks like crap. Look how stretched it is. I know, but what can I do? Wow, that's somewhat better. Don't stretch your 4x3 images to 16x9. Don't do it! Wow, Joe, that's amazing. You really are smart. Aren't I, though? Let's go over some more issues. Another issue you can run into when playing old game consoles on HDTVs is lag. When playing on a standard definition CRT television, there is no lag at all, ever. But when playing on an HDTV, the incoming image must be processed before it can be displayed. Certain TVs have more lag than others. It can render some games unplayable. Remember that light gun show we did last week? Will they work on this new Polaroid TV? Well, why don't you try it, dumbass? Since light guns rely on individual fields to be displayed as the CRT draws them to the screen to determine where the gun is pointed, 
HDTVs breaks light gun compatibility with all old school gaming systems. Well, that sucks. Even 3D games won't work because of the way the original image is processed. He's plugged in even? Did you ever wonder if it made any difference depending on which way you hook your console to your TV, you know, RF, composite, SVD, or component? Well, let's show you some of the difference in the quality. RF, which stands for radio frequency, uses a coaxial cable to deliver the video and audio information as a single noisy signal. Composite, which we all know, sends the picture as a single signal separate from the audio. S-Video separates the luminance and color information in the video signal, resulting in a much cleaner, sharper image. Highly recommended. Component is not true RGB, but if you want to spend the money, it does offer a better picture than even S-Video. Here, I take RGB out of the systems and send it to an RGB to component video transcoder to play on my standard definition CRT, which can accept component inputs. Here's what the RF image looks like. Here's composite. Maybe a bit better, but not much. S video is much better. However, I use an XMD3 for my Genesis, and it kind of sucks, so there's a bit of wire. I'm not sure how to pronounce that word since I'm not French. But proper S video looks even better than this. I highly recommend at least this for all of your systems. Here's component as derived from the RGB signal. It looks amazing! It will still look like ass on an HDTV though. You can buy standard definition TVs that accept a component video input. Well there you have it. What do you think of that fancy schmancy Polaroid HDTV now? Well, not as much as I used to, that's for sure. I think I still will buy it because it comes with a free bag of potato chips. That sounds good. Yeah, I can't pass that up. Mm -hmm. But I'm also going to go down to Arc Thrift Store and buy that $10.27 inch Sony XBR CRT TV that I saw. You absolutely should because that works great with retro gaming consoles. Yes. And I love retro games. By Nintendo. Yeah, is this Walmart Electronics? Yeah, I'm calling on that uh, Polaroid HGTVs. I was wondering if you still have any in stock with a free bag of chips. Yeah, can you put one on? No, over? no. He doesn't want any. What? Have you not listened to what we talked about in this episode? I don't know.